Hey, how's it going, everybody? I just want to do a really quick little intro for this uh, podcast episode that you're about to see. I just want to give you some context. Uh, some of you may have heard me mention, I think, in the that solo podcast that I did, um, that I had a podcast with Derek that I had not put out yet. And this podcast was recorded literally hours after um, everything first happened with my divorce, like my wife moving out and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I didn't even tell him about it at the time because I just, I don't know, I didn't, didn't want to think about it yet. But that was when this podcast was recorded right after that. So this podcast is actually a couple of months old, but I wanted to, you know, finally put it out uh, now that I'm trying to sort of grab the podcast by the reins and, you know, and, and get back into it to a certain extent. Um, there's also another episode that I recorded with Derek as, as I'm recording this now, um, like two days ago or three days ago, something like that, this week, basically, that I'll be putting out also very soon. So by the time you're seeing this video, there'll be another one coming really soon um, that was recorded, you know, about two months later, or something like that, more recently, basically what I'm trying to say. And also, really quick, before I get off to the podcast and let you guys listen to that, I wanted to also uh, remind you really quickly that I have some more of those canvas prints that you may have seen in the last video uploaded on this channel or I had that, that print that's actually still active on eBay. And if you look in the description of this video, also I will pin a comment and post uh, links to how you can find the eBay and, and the different auctions and everything. So you can go and check those out if you're interested in bidding on those. Um, I just wanted to show you I had some more. So I got this one right here. Uh, this one is a 16 by 20, so it's a little smaller. Than that first one but it's kind of an old school vintage picture of the range so the guys have been watching the videos for a long time you recognize that the little yellow targets so i thought that'd be kind of a neat one to do and we've got three of them by the way and that one's the thick like inch and a half border kind of like the original this one's a little thinner it's a thinner one but this is the uh thumbnail for image this the original use the original image for this that was on the uh, thumbnail of rapid fire 2 so that was one of my first really big editing projects I remember that I put together, but it's kind of a neat, neat picture uh, of dad's classic Glock 26. Still has that one. Doesn't care it anymore, but he still has it. Uh, and then there's another picture of dad <laughs> wearing an old 80s, uh, it's not Vietnam era, it's post-Vietnam era um, steel pot military helmet with his uh, A2 um colt sporter 2 pointed right at you so i thought that would be kind of a cool picture so anyways if you guys are interested in any of those and the, the original one as at least as i'm recording this video now is still up live and everything um you know go check that out also uh you know just keep keep an eye if you think you're going to be interested in these in these canvas prints just try to i don't know if there's a way on ebay you can like um, I don't know, favorite um, an account or I don't know how that works, but just keep an eye on, on that eBay account because they're all going to go up there on that same account where these others are. So just keep an eye on that. And I'm, I'm going to try to always have some up there unless they just are not selling at all for some reason. I'm just, I'm just going to try to keep them up there. And I'll always start the auctions out at whatever it costs me to get the print. So it's just, you know, it's totally up to you guys. Whatever you guys you know, however much you guys want to spend on them, I'm going to put them up there for whatever it costs me to get that print made. And uh, that's what they're all going to start out as. So um, anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know that really quick. And I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast from a couple of months ago. I like that sound it makes. I guess you can't hear it because you ain't got head headphones on. It's not like the old, the cowbell. Oh, yeah. What's that group that always had a cow, for some reason had a cowbell in the background? <laughs> oh, uh, From the 70s. Uh. Yeah, they did that Don't Fear the Reaper song. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones, yeah, there's that, that um, uh, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Will Ferrell did yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. That's a classic. <laughs> okay, uh, we need more cowbells. <laughs> <laughs> and at one point, he's just like unenthusiastically doing it. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Dude, you got to work with that theme music. It's been yeah. too many years. Come on. Yeah, I know. I, I think know. you do you, all it's these guitars. Game. I thought you have your own riff by now, you know. <laughs> 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 Which I saw something uh, uh, on one of these shows. Uh, it was there, there's an air guitar competition. Yeah, I've seen that. 
oh, okay, dude, that, it's yeah. America. They can make a, comp- a competition <laughs> out of anything. Yeah. And there's a, a national championship. Wow. Uh, not just some guy. No, national people come from miles around, from across the country, yeah. to compete in the air guitar competition. Who judges this? Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be funny if like uh, Simon like, Cowell. Yeah. <laughs> he suck. Get out of here. Get out. Yeah, like Eddie Van Halen shows up. You know? <laughs> Mick Jagger. No. Yeah. No. Get out. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always funny. Like. And you have the, and the rock bands, the front man, lead singer, when they don't play guitar and they play guitar on the mic cord. You know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Because right, yeah. what do you do when they do it? When they do a rift or they're doing a, you know, changes yeah. and there's no, there's no singing. Right. The, the front guy just kind of standing there like, okay. Yeah, he's got to think of something to do. <laughs> like any better used to do with, uh, yeah. with uh, Pearl Jam, which he learned to play the guitar. Yeah, he, he uh, it's, damn, it's been 20, 25 years. God, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he learned to play guitar. Uh, because I think he faced the same thing. It's like, okay. Yeah, need something to do. The dudes are playing now. Okay, all yeah. right. You can't sit on a stool and just wait. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah really. I, I always thought it, it looked really difficult to play guitar and sing, especially like the like the ones that aren't just doing rhythm, like they're really playing, you know? Yeah, um, which I thought the real ones, the best people, they didn't have to look at their fingers. Yeah, I think so. You know, cause, uh, but you see that guy go, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if you're like, uh, playing a solo or something, usually you have to look. Yeah, you have to. I mean, now, the studio guys, which I, from what I understand, are always the best musicians, the guys that work in the studio. They're the yeah. best. Uh, they're probably the guys who don't, who can just go out there and play without having to look. I mean, yeah. but that's somebody who's, you know, lived, ate, and slept music for right. years. Like, well, usually when I'm playing, it's kind of a combination because sometimes when you don't look, you can be a little more instinctive. But yeah. then you sort of sometimes have to look like, where, where am I? <laughs> right. Like, what's going on here? I, tried. I, I went through my uh, musician phase yeah. when I was a kid in sixth grade. Uh, why? I didn't have any real interest in music. It was just everybody else was doing it, right? Yeah. And uh, saxophone, they said, uh, they got the, the band director came up and said, what do you want to play? Uh, I'm a ten. I'm like the saxophone. Yeah, I wasn't even really sure what a saxophone was, but it yeah. just came, it popped in my head. Yeah. So uh, we uh, we get they got me one. My parents got me one, and uh, I'm like, man, it looks okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And this guy sitting in the in the fourth row of the band. Yeah. And it's not like this was your classic junior high band. <laughs> so I didn't real, you know, you know, real halting, real tinny, yeah. you know, real, you know, you know, real just. Yeah. You know. <laughs> You know, I mean, right. and some guy, guy with the triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Who plays the triangle? <laughs> There's so much you can do with the triangle, though. You know, you can bang it like on the side, <laughs> and then you can do the little circles in the middle. I think that's it. <laughs> Are there people at Juilliard now? Is that triangle yeah. class to the left? <laughs> you know what the- <laughs> like, who's the greatest triangle player? Ever? We gotta look that up. We got to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like the symbols I mean shh, yeah. that's about it I mean, yeah. I mean that on. actually is I've tried that before it is kind of tricky like hitting it the right spot. I, but I guess once you figure it out it's kind of like alright that's okay, what got it, it is it. You know? got it okay I, I can go sit down <laughs> <laughs> I always thought those big drums were cool Come about the, uh, about? the like the kettle looking things or just, kettle drums okay you know, yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's more to it than what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, there has to be, you know. I think they're so big that even hitting it in like a different spot makes a different yes, sound. I think. Yes, I'm, I'm, there has to be more to yeah. it than uh, than what it looks. Uh, but uh, this guy next to me was uh, he had this big tenor saxophone. The thing was as tall as he was. Oh man! And uh, the problem I had was I was too lazy to practice. I was like, ah, you know, yeah, I just want to be part. able to do it. Come on. Uh, they're like, pra- and then the, the embarrassing part was that they'd stop you. Doing their doing band practice, yeah, and they go, okay, you hit it. <laughs> oh, I go, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my I god, <laughs> uh, I didn't practice. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> what, what am I gonna do? Okay, e- e- okay, all right, I'm done. <laughs> okay, after about two times of getting called out, I'm done. Yeah. there you go. So, so much for my band playing. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I I really wanted to play. Well, first I played drums, and then I decided I really wanted to play guitar. Okay, and I started playing guitar. I was probably uh, toward the end of high school is okay. when I started playing. And what always happened to me is I, t- I would take it seriously for a while. Yeah. And then I would lose interest because, you yeah. know, the practice thing. The practice know? thing, yeah. It's just like, ugh, you know, it just takes so long. Mm-hmm. And, and then I would pick it up again and then lose interest, you know. Yeah. Pick it up again, lose That's interest. That's trick. But, mm-hmm. you know, this time I've actually stuck with it and I, and I realized what it was the whole time. Like, I'm old enough now. 
I don't. I'm not. I don't have these delusions. Like I'm gonna be a rock star one day. You know what I mean? Like I don't. I don't Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't. I don't have that feeling. I just play because it's fun. Which is what keeps you into it. You play because you like playing. You right. Know? Exactly. And then and then I don't put pressure on myself to learn stuff because yeah. who cares? It doesn't matter. I just I'm just playing because, because I'm I like playing. The yeah. act of doing exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. It's yeah. good to learn an instrument. It is. Um, I, I like to think, oh man, I'd like to sit down and do that one day. Nah, dude, I'm too. I ain't got no patience to open the pack of a pack of ham in the refrigerator. Yeah. So I cut it open. I, so uh, it, you yeah, know. I want to learn how to play the mouth harp. The <laughs> you know, the doing doing the juice the juice organ. Yeah, <laughs> <What> the, <laughs> the, juice harp. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nah, the um, you had to, it, as a guy in the uh, last century when I was a kid, uh, you had the only dudes could play trumpet. Or um, saxophone, of course, yeah. or trombone, or drums. Yeah. Oh, if you, if you were a guy, you couldn't play the clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That is like always like a girl. Instrument. Clarinet, or the gay or something with the hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't even touch a flute. Don't even look at a flute. <laughs> 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 Unless you're like English like 500 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> or Jethro Tull. <laughs> flute. What the hell are you, boy? You made a flute. <laughs> you, can't, you can't come across as cool. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I played the flute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, in, like you're like some guy that's in prison, you know, playing yeah. the flute. <laughs> tattoos, you yeah. know. Aryan Nation tattoos, you yeah. know, playing the flute. <laughs> <laughs> like, beats people with it. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, that's all. Were, you were limited as a guy. You were limited to what you could play. Well, drums. That's a good. Uh, drum, oh yeah, yeah, drums or uh, what's that uh, tuba? Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> French horn. <laughs> oh, have you seen that thing? Or like, uh, of course, yeah, it's been in the news all the you know white supremacist rallies. But there, there was somebody that brought a tuba to one of those and like, <laughs> while the KKK was marching. <coughs> they played that thing where it's like doo, doo. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so great so, 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 so yes it uh yes uh the sexism even creeps into music yeah uh, like you ever see a female no, tr- they were making they were doing it to make fun of the i know yeah, I, uh, okay i thought you were saying uh, like uh, yeah a bunch of nazi uh, tuba players uh, and uh, like, the nazis <laughs> that tuba over there another example <laughs> they've ruined tubas now <laughs> First they ruined the Confederate flag. Now they ruined. Two of us. <laughs> Sorry, that's the that, next thing. You know the flutes will be next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it was uh, like you never see a, a, a. I've never seen a female trumpet player. Yeah. To be honest, never. Uh, now I'm guitar sure there are, there's one, but yeah, I can't think of. I know, mean, probably a, like a jazz. I can, I can see a female jazz trumpet player. Yeah. With a little thing uh, at the end. Or yeah, I um um I saw something. It was it was coolest. It was coolest. Uh, whatever. I know we got a family oriented show here. Yeah, yeah. Trying to keep the, <laughs> yeah. the cussing down. Uh, this band, all female band, and all the guitar players were female. That yeah. was hot. I don't know why it was hot as hell. Yeah, oh, I like, I've never oh. seen one of those. I know there's a few, like, there's a band called, uh, they're called Les Zeppelin. <laughs> Les. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because they created this, like, media firestorm at Bonner several years back because people thought, because Led Zeppelin was doing a reunion uh-huh. around the time, and they thought, like, it was like a secret Led Zeppelin reunion. Oh, uh-huh. you know? yeah, they kept running it down there. Right, because it was like, because they're a small band, they were like way down on. You know how those music festivals do? It's like the big band that starts out in big text and it just gets smaller and yeah, smaller. The yeah, the headliners up. For yeah, me. now as it goes down. So it was like a little footnote, uh-huh. Led Zeppelin, and people were like, "Oh man, this is like a secret Led yeah. Zeppelin," you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, it was a lesbian, all female, of course, you know, band <laughs> that played Led Zeppelin songs. I, I saw CeeLo Brown. He uh, did one of his songs. He had an all female band yeah. dressed in pink. Wow. It was it was cool. I mean, yeah. dude. that guy's interesting. He's yeah. an innovator for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was that thing he did where he came out and like that. He was like dressed in that total one hundred percent gold. Like, dude, I gotta thing. see that. Nah, <laughs> it was weird. That's up there with uh, um, Lady Gaga in the meat suit. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I guess it's a free country. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, it's a free. Yeah. Like uh, Prince, God rest his soul. Um, uh, years ago, he uh, wore that bodysuit. To the American Music Awards, yeah, I'll never, the, with the, with the, yeah, I'll never forget. It, unfortunately, <laughs> he uh, wore this uh, this this uh, this uh, flesh colored bodysuit with yeah. wings under the arms and ass. It didn't have an ass. That sounds like Prince. It was assless. <laughs> I went, and and this guy died in jail. You know, yeah. again in America, if you got money or fame, people yeah. have to put up with you. 
if a regular person walked, if somebody walked down the street in front of uh, Mount, Mount, <laughs> Mount Hickok here, <laughs> and with a with an assless body suit, he'd be locked up like that. <laughs> what this guy doing here? What is yeah. this? <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes what I feel like entertainment is and the entertainment industry sometimes is it's kind of like uh you know society's way of like letting people vent so that they'll it, you know you think about it it's like i feel like our society is a little repressed in a certain way in many ways yeah. you know and the people that are doing the repressing they're probably like yeah let them have their rock and roll and their, crazy, their rock and roll you know? <laughs> and their low yeah. calorie <laughs> right. it's like parents like they, you know if you let their kids rebel against them sort of you know most you know yeah, well, That's, I feel like it's like they're encouraged to do stuff like well, that. Well, see, say. if you're in, if you're in the uh, the entertainment field, yeah. it's like you do something crazy like that, you're eccentric, right? And you get noticed more, you know, exactly. And- but if you're just a regular guy walking around with the assless body suit, oh, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're crazy. Yeah. All right, lock him up, get him out, get get him out, <laughs> get him out. <laughs> it's like in the you ever seen the Simpsons movie? I it, think so. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty good. But there's a scene there. This guy. Uh, someone was like, I think you've grown mad with power. And he's like, of course I have. You ever tried to go mad without power? Like, no one listens to you. <laughs> That's so great. That's right. That's like, uh, like uh, what's his name? Um, Austin Powers, what's his name? Forgot him yeah. that quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, also, um, I want to say it's Mike Myers, not Mike, Mike Myers. Myers. <laughs> How quickly we Michael forget. Myers, Mike Myers, two different things. <laughs> Mike Myers. How quickly we forget. Yeah. Uh, he was. Uh, I saw him do a, uh, a skit, and he said uh, he was one of these late night um, infomercial guys. Okay. Was it like, SNL? Or uh, yeah. Okay. He says uh, yes. He says uh, yes. I want to get rich. Yes, I want to get rich quick. Who wants to get rich slow? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, if you're famous, you can get away with all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, uh, like uh, The Walking Dead. I hate to plug other shows. Oh no, um, yeah. Uh, when Rick shaved his his, uh, his beard. Yeah. Um, was it Redis? Uh, the, the what's his name? Daryl. Yeah, Daryl. Yeah. Yeah, what, the Redis. Whatever his last. Oh, the talking about the real guy. The, the, his real name. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, it's. Um, it's been off the air that Norman, long. Norman, Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. Yeah. He asked uh, the, the guy, let me have your beard, your shavings from your face. Oh, wow. And sold it on eBay. <laughs> uh, dude, I believe it. Somebody yeah. buy it, whatever it is. Get like a picture of him, you know, and have the beers there. <laughs> in a paper bag, a plastic yeah. bag. Dude, I'll, there you go. You need to take, yeah. dude. On special occasions, wear it. You know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a nice beard. Uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because <laughs> it's actually a rare collector's edition uh, Rick's beard. Right. <laughs> do you, uh, you and your uh, old man, do uh, uh, these Coscom, Comic Con things? No, I've never been to one. Actually, been like, to- I wouldn't mind uh-huh. going sometime. Dude, I thought, uh, you know, hey, who knows? Dress up a stormtrooper. You know? yeah. <laughs> the Thirteenth Legion. Yeah, uh, yeah Dad so I could like- just dress up as himself. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, I saw one in India. Uh, mm, oh, that was interesting. And oh, uh, well, yeah, these uh, these two uh, Indian women took some flack for some reason for dressing as Wonder Woman. I'm like, yeah. why? They looked great. I'm like, what's the problem? Yeah, but you know, dude. And uh, was it because of like the the Sharia law thing? I, 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 oh, that's I, right. They don't have that in India. No, right? no, not yeah, India. Yeah, that's yeah. Hindu. That's right. Uh, but uh, for some reason, these women took flack for uh, dressing up as uh, Wonder Woman. I, they looked great. I don't yeah. know what the problem was. I don't know who complained about them. Yeah, I said, like, screw them, dude. They looked great. It was so. probably something similar to like the Sharia yeah. law thing. It's yeah. some kind of you know. some uh, traditional Orthodox, yeah. you know, Hindu person. What is this? You know. And, yeah. But uh, uh, cosplay. Uh, yes, I did when uh, Wonder Woman the movie came out. Uh, me and someone else did <laughs> contemplate dressing up. Yeah. I thought, well, I, don't, I mean, how do I pull that off? Yeah. <laughs> how do I pull that off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe an alternate reality. Wonder- <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it could be Batman. <laughs> Batman. <That's right. laughs> yes, the older, slightly overweight Batman. <laughs> Batman in the later years. <laughs> yeah, Robin, I'm uh, just taking I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I'm just going to take it, Robin. You know, that reminds me, I was listening to uh, Joe Rogan. I don't have time to listen to as much as I'd like to anymore, but... Joe Rogan's podcast, you know, that sticker on the microphone right there. Okay. And uh, they were, t- him and somebody else was talking about Batman. It was just like a clip I happened to get, happen upon. And they were talking about how, how dumb it is, like how Batman has this protective suit, you know, where everything is like protected and Armor, all this yeah. stuff. 
But yet, because uh, Joe Rogan's a fighter, his chin being the most vulnerable place <laughs> is like just totally exposed. <laughs> and also, he's like, you know, and it's big and it's white. It's just like a big target. It's right there. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's like his whole suit is black and he got this big white chin right there. Just, it's like, <laughs> or you're Batman. Come yeah. on. Uh, Batman, is, he's the world's greatest detective. Oh, that's uh, true. That's yeah. right. And uh, he's also a martial ninja. ninja. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> if you go by the uh, um, the uh, the new uh, reboot, uh, yeah. the Christopher Nolan reboot, right. he's been training in the mountains of Asia for years. So, yeah. so you probably wouldn't even get close enough to hit it. That's true. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. That's, that's what it right. is. It's to lure you in to feel like you have a chance. Best one I liked was um, the version of Batman. Well, it was a it was a it was a, um, a undercover Batman. What was that movie with? Uh, um, What's his name? Uh, uh, Danny Trejo? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah him as Batman. Uh, no. He's in every movie, so I'm just guessing. But uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, dang, what's his name? Uh, there needs to be a Sam Jackson he was in, Batman. He was in... He was, <laughs> he was in... Uh, he was in... Uh, 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 Con Air. Uh, oh. What's his um, name? John Malkovich? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the other guy. The other... What's the guy's name? He was in... Uh, um, uh, Con Air, he was in. Uh, You're talking about the uh, the Cameron Poe, that guy. Who? In the movie. His name in the movie was Cameron Poe. He had long hair and he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Out of jail. The former Ranger, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, um, what's his name? Forgot, forgot, forgot him already, too. It's been that. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, see. He's not the guy in The Matrix. He's, I get them confused sometimes. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is going, who, what? Yeah. You think I look like him? <laughs> uh, Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, see, uh, dude, that's a, that's a warning because if you're out of the spotlight for just that long, people oh, forget yeah. you. You know, yeah. uh, Nicholas Cage was in uh, that movie with the little girl, Hit Girl, and he was Big Daddy. He was a uh, bootleg Batman. He was a discount okay. Batman. Uh, um, uh, whatever the name of the movie. what was the name of that movie? It's, it's bothering me now. We gotta look it up. <laughs> but anyway, he played him as a. Uh, uh, he was this guy. Um, uh, he made his money with computers and all that. And uh, his, him and his daughter, his 13-year-old daughter, went around fighting crime. Yeah. And uh, the guy looked just like Batman, except he used guns. Oh, <laughs> I know what movie you're talking about now. Oh. Is, it, is it Kick-Ass? Kick-Ass, yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. Kick-Ass, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he was Big Daddy. Again, it was, it was, it was a discount bootleg Batman. Yeah. That's all it was, <laughs> except he used guns. Yeah. Uh, and his, girl, his daughter was bad. Uh, yeah. Hit Girl was bad. Oh. Yeah, I've never uh, seen that. I've heard about it. Yeah, I need to check it out. Great movie, great movie. And uh, it was Batman with guns. Uh, he yeah. had the cape and the ears and all that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you know what? Yeah. You don't have to work as hard when you got guns. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you you I love that. That's cool that they did like a knockoff Batman. <laughs> it was great. It was great. I thought yeah. they would get sued. <laughs> but, yeah. But he didn't have the. Uh, did, did he call it? Did he call himself Batman? No, no he was called Big Daddy. Oh, he that's right. A, okay. He had a. Uh, again. Same suit, yeah. <laughs> cape, the same thing except no back, yeah. a yellow belt with BD, <laughs> that yeah. big daddy, that was it. That's funny. <laughs> they went out and fought crime at night. You yeah. know? And oh. And that, I saw a part of a documentary about guys that actually do that. And, yes. And some of them have been injured a few times. Uh, yes. Uh, Not do a great I, idea. Do, well, do, <laughs> also, if you're going to do that, really – in reality, your best bet, first of all, dress normal. Don't wear a costume. Tights. No tights. Yeah. Dress normal. Uh, no capes. You know, uh, step one, dress normal. Step two, have a gun. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And then uh, step three is like, you know, just be, be more of a good witness than anything. Yeah, be realistic. Yeah. Be realistic. Hey, dude, you might not want to go try to fight this guy. You're not Batman, dude. Yeah. Uh, I saw. Uh, I think I saw the same when you're talking about. Um, uh, there are people out there who uh, they have regular jobs, and then once they get home at the end of work, they suit up and go out there and patrol the streets. Yeah. There's this guy, uh, some black guy in Seattle. He um, he walks around dressed as. Uh, I think that's the one I saw. Uh, yeah. What's his name? That black guy, um, black superhero. Uh, but not Blade, not Blade. It was uh, someone. Ah. Uh, anyway, um, uh, Spawn. Spot. Oh, okay. And he just patrolled the streets. You know, the guy's built. He's built. Yeah. But at the same time, you got to be realistic. You know, like you said, be a good witness. You know, right. uh, the guy, he's uh, does first, he knows first aid, uh, CPR, all that. Uh, he has recording devices. He'll call the police if there's a problem. Yeah. He's realistic. 
You right. know, hey, I'm not for the walking around in the costumes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. That's what his police that need to just wear a superhero costume. <laughs> <laughs> That's <right. laughs> yeah. Stop this criminal act. <laughs> Which uh, at this certain place there should remain, that shall remain nameless. Yeah. Uh, this guy he was coming out there to work with me, and uh, one night I wasn't there. I came back the next night, and they said, uh, "Hey man, what's with him?" I said, what do you mean? Well, a fight broke out the other night and uh, between these two guys, and this guy ran up there. Now, this guy, um, he was a his real job was a Chinese linguist. He was on break from his teaching job hmm. in China, and he decided he was going to do security, right? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> he's over there, and he was old school. He had the bus driver hat with star and security across. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, duty belt with the flashlight, the big ring of keys. Oh, uh, yeah, like the big mag light. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, big security patch on the side, yeah. you know, gray shirt with black pocket flaps yeah. the whole nine yards. So this guy, this fight breaks out. He's by himself in this bar, and this fight breaks out. And he walks up to these two guys about to duke it out and goes, Stop! <laughs> Stop this criminal act. <laughs> like he said, literally said criminal act. <laughs> no, he just said stop. You okay. know, he just stood you know, up. <laughs> so with hands hip. Stop. <laughs> stop this now. <laughs> and, two, and from all reports, the two guys looked at him like, what? <laughs> you see that? Do you see that? <laughs> and the staff was like, huh? <laughs> they, they stopped. It was more of astonishment. <laughs> that yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> it's almost like the time I remember that these guys, uh, these two like gang affiliated guys, got into a fight, uh-huh. and big dudes, and they were uh, fighting and wrestling on the ground. And I was like, I'm not really sure what to do. I guess this, psh- yeah, <laughs> and I sprayed him. Yes, right. And it just made him fight harder. <laughs> oh, so, like, it didn't really. Nah, nah. Luckily, a bunch of other people came, and then they they stopped or whatever. It was it was weird. It was interesting how the fight broke out because, mm-hmm. you know, I've been in a lot of situations where people talk a lot of crap and nothing yeah. ever happens. Yeah. You know, and it was uh, outside of a club, of course. And there was this guy. Okay, let me think. He was one guy was walking to his car, and then I guess the other guy was walking to. They were both walking to their cars, I think, but their paths sort of were crossing, you know. Yeah. And they were sort of talking. One guy was gangster disciples, and the yeah. other one was Crips. Mm-hmm. And I think what one of them was get definitely gangster disciples. And one of them was like another gang. I think Crips. They might be friends. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyways, so uh, one of them was started talking trash to the other one, you know, and they were sort of talking trash. Mm-hmm. And then one point, the guy, one of the guys, was like, "Wait a minute, are we really about to do this?" Mm-hmm. You know. And then the other guy kept talking. He's like, "Okay." And then he just <laughs> ran. <laughs> and they just started fighting. <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, this guy's not messing around." <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw something similar. Uh, I got a warning. Some guy, a uh, patron, came up and told me, "Hey, look, those guys are talking crap back there. I think they're about to fight." I look, I go back there, you know, you do presents, you know, hey, you start fighting, that means I got to fight too, and you know what that means. Yeah, you know, hey. I don't fight fair. <laughs> That's right, so they kind of backed off, and I walked off. As soon as I walked off, I look around, they're in each other's face again, oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're going at it. No problem, I go in there, I hose them both down. I empty the can into them, right? Yeah. And uh, then they scatter. Problem is, as I rush toward them, I ran to my own Fall, my oh, own, yeah. my own cloud of chemical spray, and now I can't see. That's terrifying. Now I'm like, oh, where are they? Yeah. Uh, I hear yeah. the guy coughing over there, but, but then I finally I clear my eyes enough to go see. There he is, and yeah. he wanted to act up, so I wore him out with the baton a little bit, gave him another dose of spray. He gave up. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, that's lucky. <laughs> you ever think about going to the foam or the gel? Here, you uh, see here one or. Well, uh, the people that you work for want you to do the uh, foam and gel because once you cut loose with that uh, that freeze plus P, that spray, it yeah. clouds up the whole room. Oh, yeah. I'm Even like, outside, I mean, it really just I'm hangs like, kind of. I'm like, great. Get them all out of here. Yeah. <laughs> get them all out. I don't care. Yeah. You have to get them out. The yeah. big fogger, you know. The <laughs> big tank. Or you need like, like a flamethrower thing, like big tank on the back. You know, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Great. <laughs> hey, I told them by myself, I don't care. If I, I ain't got time to separate the sheep from the goats. Yeah. Get them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get them all. <laughs> what were you doing? You sprayed me too. What were you doing here? Yeah. What were you doing here? Right. And I, in fact, I did break up uh, one uh, one episode. There were like eight, nine guys. back, Of course, in the back of the place, you know. Yeah. And I also, no, all hell breaks loose. Eight, nine guys start going at it. Oh, man. I'm like uh, by myself. I'm Kinda like even numbers or? Uh, it was about even, about seven against eight, something like that. Oh, shit. I thought you meant like four against five. <laughs> okay. No, uh, it was, uh, it was about, it, over some pool BS. Right? Yeah. You know, something. Hey, you brush up against me. Get off me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> they start fighting. I go back there. Again, I ain't got time. You know, a lot of people are going, all right, let's break this up. You know, yeah. Pff- no time for that. <laughs> yeah. I went and I just. Sh- 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 
<laughs> they scared. <laughs> they scared like rabbits. Uh, yeah. I don't care if I saw you standing there. Shh. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> hey, what were you doing there? Yeah. You know, and it broke them up. It cleared them out. They all scattered. Good. Yeah. Good. What? what? I th- yeah. I mean, you know, get over it. Somebody wanted to complain. Well, you know, you know, you should have just broke them up. Wait, wait. What part of eight, nine guys fighting did you not understand? What yeah. did you miss? I mean, pepper spray, it sucks. But the thing is, there's, you know, unless I've never heard of any, like, unless, maybe there's some cases where people are allergic to capsaicin or something like ah. that. But I, I've never heard of that uh, happening. I mean, it, it's... It sucks at the time, but it causes no actual physical yeah, harm no long to anybody. Term. It's going to wear off about three hours. Good. Yeah. You know, plus. And I'm like, after, again, if you, there's a big fight breaks out in here and you see me coming, why would why'd you stay there? Why you run for it? Yeah, get out of there. Yeah. That's right. Hey, bystander, I don't care. I ain't got yeah. time to figure out who's who. I, yeah. That was always my thing, you know, with those, like, security <laughs> situations. Like, you give people a chance. Yeah. And after a certain point, it's kind of like, okay, you knew what was going on That's here. Right. You know. And they're going to complain. What the, I'm, I'm, he sprayed me. Yeah, I did. Yeah. There was a yeah. fight going on. I ain't got to do. Yeah. Also, there's something somehow I love to preach about called disparity of force. If there's a bunch of them and just you, that's even more reason for you to use whatever you got. Yeah. People don't seem to understand that. No, well, I ain't got no gun, but there's six six of you. Right. What, what, what? What was I supposed to think? Yeah. What were you going to do if you got your hands on me? Oh, yeah. I mean, like four or five people could overpower oh, yeah. I mean, anybody. What? You know? So what? So I'm supposed to just let you? No, yeah. dude. No. That, that to me, is one of the most terrifying situations yeah. in, in anything where it's security, regular mm-hmm. civilian, or, well, military is probably different, but mm-hmm. if you've got, like, a group of people that are just coming down at you yeah. and you feel like like they're going to mess you up yeah. and you have a gun and they don't, but you know that like, you know, like I don't care how big and strong you are, like four or five people. Yeah. What know, are you going to do? Plus what you can do. So what, so what do you do in that situation? You shoot them. That's like, well, you just shot unarmed people. And then they six all, of them coming right, at me. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. Let's say you, okay, let's, let's say this scenario. So like four people, five, let's say five come at you and they're like going to, you know, they're going to mess you up. They could kill you, you know? Yeah. So you shoot one. Right, get and your attention. Yeah. They all let's say they all scatter, but yeah. then the one guy just laying there dead. The cops come. Well, you just shot an unarmed man, and then his buddies they get a hold of them, and they're like, "We just you know walking down the street, and you know, we didn't know." Exactly. That's why you need. Uh, it's important to have witnesses, yeah. and also get your story straight. Witnesses that are unbiased. Yes, true. That's why, like the management or uh, you know, by, most of the time, bystanders do the right thing. You, you hope know, so. But most you know, of the time, most of the time, yeah. not at all. It uh, depends on the situation. Usually, I found that people do the right thing as long as they see that you are doing the right thing. Yeah. If you if you went out there waving your gun, <laughs> shots in the air, <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> what you don't do that? <laughs> well, see, I always keep like the first couple of shots in my gun are blank, <laughs> and because uh, every situation starts with pow pow right in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so, if <laughs> what, the, what I found is that uh, if people see you doing the right thing, they will come. Witnesses will come forward and go, "Hey, yeah. look, hey, look, he gave me every chance. Uh, they all acted up. He still gave him a chance. They got more belligerent, and then he drew his weapon. What I would think is, if they know you got a weapon, even if there are four or five of them, why are they going to rush you? Yeah." I, well, okay, uh, like uh, wide up, yeah, with that crowd, and right. that, that guy tried when they tried to lynch that guy. He says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll get me, but I'm going to take twelve of you with me. Right. Who's first? You, you, yeah." And especially yeah. if you have a shotgun, that's the effectiveness of a shotgun because, like, even at close range, if someone shoots you with a pistol, if it's uh-huh. not like a dead, you know, shot in the head or something, uh-huh. you might survive. A shotgun, though, at close range, you're done. Uh, that's I mean, right, pretty much. And I'm like, "Who's first? Right. Who's first?" So um, turn a mob into individuals you know, that <laughs> real quick, <laughs> real quick. Yeah. So I, I'm a big believer that uh, it's all how you act, how you come across. Um, somebody should be called the police as soon as I see that confrontation coming. Somebody needs to be calling the police. And again, it's all about how you uh, carry yourself. Let them yell, scream, call you this. That's fine. Yeah. Where, where are you doing that out there? Yeah. You know, and if you come toward me, it'll be the last thing you do. Right. I, and I found that um, that's what makes it. That's what makes you real effective. That. You portray to them the certainty that if you threaten me or anybody else here, I will end you right there. I yeah. will do it. Yeah. The certainty of punishment is what stops them. And they can talk all you want. That's fine. Go ahead. I don't yeah. care. But don't do anything. Don't do anything threatening because that will be bad. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to cite that case in Atlanta where this guy shot a cr- He was challenged by a crowd of people twice, capped off two people, Yeah. and found innocent both times. 
Why? Large group of people threatening him. Yeah. Came toward him. He opened up into him. And his defense was, there were six or seven of them. Right. What was I going to do? They could have done anything. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's why even like being pepper sprayed sometimes in the right setting is justified, you know, for yeah. using deadly force. Especially when you're by yourself. Yeah, it's just you. And there's a group of them. And right. there's a group of them. Look, I've told you to leave. You have no legal. And one thing that's always worked for me is that you do explain. Escalating force. You explain to them, look, you got to go. Why? Because you're a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Leave. You have no legal right to be here. Get up. Leave now. Yeah. And then, hey, man, spray comes out, baton, hey, man, you need to go. You need to go, please. Yeah. And then if he doesn't, right? And what? I explained to you. I talked to you. I respected you. Yeah. And you still didn't leave. And that kind of throws it back into his lap because when, cause they always swear, I wasn't doing nothing. Well, did he ask you to leave? Yes. Why did you? Well, he didn't give me a chance. I heard this. He didn't give me a chance to. Wait. He asked you to leave, and then he stopped you from leaving. Yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand like people's mentality in those situations. Like, what do they expect to gain? Like, what is it in a situation like that? Or some, you know, whatever it's a fight or whatever's going mm -hmm. on in a club where it's obvious that like, okay, the, some sort of authority has arrived mm -hmm. and is going to handle the situation. At that point, what do you have to gain? Uh, nothing because they're you know, they're I mean, high, they're altered, they're uh, emotionally, mentally diminished. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what has to be. You know, what it is. because and not a lot of people take a buck kicking because they can't back. They don't want to back down in front of their friends. They don't yeah, want, that's they feel it like too, they're yeah. losing face in front of their people. Hey man, I talked to your. That's why you talk to your people. Hey man, you just mind talking to him? Yeah. And then, especially if his people talk to him, he still wants to act up. That's when they kind of go. Yeah. Hey man, you know he was reasonable. We tried talking to you, and you still wouldn't listen. All right. Yeah. So again, it's it's the it's the certainty of punishment, like yeah. in Singapore, it's a, the certainty of punishment that makes people behave, not the threat of it. Right. It's a it's a tough job. I because I, I remember one time. You know, working the clubs, uh, you know, we, the, we had to do the whole park clear out the parking lot thing, which is just uh, horrible. It's yeah. terrible. And there was a bunch of like huge dudes hanging out by the car. Uh, you know, I ended up being the guy I had to go over there and say something to them, uh -huh. you know. And it was funny how it happened though, because I walked over, I was like, hey, I tried to be super nice, like, hey, you know, you know, we got over. I kind of made it like I tried to put it off of me and be like, yeah, they're telling us we got to get everybody out yeah. of the parking lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And the guy was like, what do you mean? You know, dude was almost as big as me, but yeah. and, like thicker. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you mean? You know, and it was. But you gotta my, leave. In my brain, I went like, "Oh man, this is gonna be a deal, an ordeal." But then he was just like, "That's ah, fine. We'll, we'll leave in a second. And I was like, "Okay." And I was like, <laughs> "No, no, no, dude, now." now. Yeah. Well, like, uh, I, give, I try to give people as much leeway as possible until it gets to a certain, especially with the parking lot thing, because you got so many. people. Yeah, and you're right. You don't know, you know who's got what in their vehicle, and yeah, and it's, and I usually kind of look at it as sort of like it's kind of like a a two-step process like you go ahead and let people know hey you know let's get out of here yeah. we gotta go we gotta go you know and then you just kind of move on yeah you know and then if they're still there you come back around they're yeah. still there oh, hey man yeah. you have to you're right you know there'll Something be a, like, that. like uh, there was an incident in a certain town that's remain nameless uh <laughs> this uh these two guys were covering a uh a waffle house oh okay and uh these two wait a waffle house uh, needs security what what like, How? <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh these two guys couldn't come in because it was crowded and they decided to go out their car and pull out AKs. Ooh, man. And uh, I wouldn't have reacted. Now, I'm sure these guys, I wasn't there, and these guys did what they thought was best. They heard everybody back into the bathroom behind the counters, and they called police. It took Metro, Metro Police 20 minutes to get there. Wow. What part of waving AKs was not understood? Yeah. Uh, personally. And what I, part of civilians need to have guns <laughs> is not understood also? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, which uh, me and the guy I work with, we thought, dude. If I see you go back to your car and pull out an AK, for, you're done. I'm going to open fire on you. You're, oh, you're yeah. done. You're yeah, done. I mean, there's no – yeah, I mean, there's you no have if, to assume. Answer, but, yeah. You have to assume. And, and also, uh, you just got a handgun. You got to you got to nip that I, in the butt. I got to get know? in there quick. I got to get my <laughs> yeah. hits in there quick because, uh, yeah. 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 Exactly. And uh, you got to be aggressive. And that's one thing that uh, – you see, you got a lot of posters out there. Yeah. Uh, I think um, – uh, one thing that's worked for me is that showing because posers can be dangerous too, though. Yes, a, a, a puss with a gun is very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to show aggression. You got to show controlled aggression. Uh, yeah. Usually, uh, if they understand it, we're gonna go all the way if we have to. Right. I will not hesitate. They'll back off because they're if they're if they're sane at all, they'll realize that you know what, it ain't worth this. Yeah. It's not worth it. You know. But you never know. We got that crazy guy, that nutcase, that guy who's mentally, emotionally diminished. You know. Yeah. You know, Let's go shit out. Okay, crowd, dude. Okay. Oh, I just got to see a weapon. That's all I got to see. Yeah. That's all I have to see is a weapon. Yeah.
and another thing too, I feel like these guys, these you know gangsters or whatever, they think that they're tough because they're willing to bend the law and break the law and have all these guns, and all this mm. kind of stuff. It's not like they're going to the range and practicing. You know, I, thought, I just thought that too. You <laughs> yeah. know, I mean, like most well, of them can't shoot. I mean, yeah. they can spray. You know, yeah. <laughs> throw bullets out there, but uh, a stand up yeah. shootout. Uh, yeah, I don't imagine they're most of them are all that familiar with guns. Yeah, really, exactly. Anyways, I know. mean, nah. I mean, nah. Um, it's but, like that. That you ever see that viral photo? Surely the guy meant it as a joke, but it's some like gangster dude holding a, a revolver with a yeah, magazine. yeah, with, like, yeah. with like extended back. Yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't know. Um, I've seen some of these people uh, that um, they're protesting. I saw this one thing where uh, this guy was uh, calling out the mayor of some town uh, uh, for following uh, certain groups, for the police following certain groups. Yeah, and the guy showed up with a uh, body armor. And an empty holster. Not necessarily a good thing to do at City Hall. Yeah. You know, I understand. Yes, we hear you. Thank you. Yes. But, uh, and uh, start making comments that, uh, you know, I, your people follow me. I don't give a, a whatever. I can probably shoot better than them. You know, you know, do everything you're saying can be construed as a threat. You know that, right? Yeah. You talk to the mayor of the city, right? Yeah. You know, not, I understand what you're saying. I understand your, but that, we got to look at other ways of, of uh, of, of, of saying this because yeah. you're, 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 what you're doing, what you're saying can be con- construed as a threat. That's not good. Right. And the chief of police was there and the mayor was there and they listened, you know, they came out, we heard you now, please go. Yeah. Right. You, you gotta be careful. I mean, um, I confront this one at this one person, <laughs> this one person, uh, he, he rolled up on his motorcycle, you know, parked in front of the place. No, you can't do that. Uh, you need to park. You need to park your vehicle over there, sir. Yeah. I'm just get, sir. You need to park your vehicle over there, sir. I'm just. You need to park your vehicle over there. Move your vehicle over there. <laughs> and then I looked at. He had a Glock. Oh my God. Well, a Glock on his hip. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll save my comment. I was gonna make on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had a Glock on his hip. Hey, sir. You need to put that weapon up right there. Well, I wasn't gonna. And he. Re, I, went, I, I unsnapped and pulled that. By God, 1911 halfway out. Yeah. And went. Put the weapon in the vehicle now. Yeah. And then. Uh, he backed off. Saw that 1911. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God, it's a 1911. My yeah. God. Oh, which reminds me, I saw, um, I was in Lexington recently. We did a meet and greet up there mm-hmm. for Bud's Gun Shop. And I saw a 1911 that cost $12,000. What and is this thing made out of? <laughs> well, it was Alvin York's gun or something? A lot of the price was in the grips because they were mammoth ivory. Yeah. <laughs> okay okay definitely for the man who has everything that's right, right, that's right. The mammoth. <laughs> what kind of grips you got on that thing oh you know nothing special just well, mammoth ivory. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, just an extinct animal's ivory <laughs> is that like it's everyday carry <laughs> yeah, yeah i got my mammoth grip 19 yeah. limb rob <laughs> but it was a uh, it was there's a company if you heard them not called cabot firearms and they make yeah, really exactly. nice custom 1911s mm-hmm. and they have regular ones that are like i mean there's the regular ones are expensive too you yeah. know there's that there's that price range of custom 1911s where they're like handmade yeah. hand fitted you mm-hmm. know and they're expensive, but you know they're expensive for a reason. Yeah, for a reason, you know? mm-hmm. and they're usually somewhere between that two to four thousand dollar range. Oh, was that all? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, and they make some, you know, that are in that range. But they also do these like really special, uh, like runs and you know special versions of them like that. They probably only made like one or those. Or well, how many mammoth tusks are they out there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, wait, wait. But they're one of the things they're famous for is they made I think two 1911s, a pair of them, out of a meteorite. Did you ever hear about that? Whoa, dude. Yeah. Oh, my They're God. They're valued at like oh. well over a million dollars oh, yeah, or something. Dude. Again, that's, that's Bill Gates. Uh, just yeah. give me two of them. Whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, that that was just like a publicity stunt <laughs> yeah. kind of, you know. Oh, but man. it's cool that they did that, you know. I'd love to actually see them. I think they set up, I think they have them at some of the trade shows and stuff. We can see them. I like to, uh, I was thinking I'll probably get one out of Wal- Wal- Walrus Tusk. Oh, yeah. There are plenty of walruses around. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And you can still get ivory, ivory grips. Well, you know, know, if it's it's already out there, you know, you can't get new ones. But uh, uh, you can also get fake ivory. I've been thinking about doing that myself. Fake ivory grips. The only only thing with those um, is you have to watch. And you may not not, uh, bother you, but on some of those, they're like uh, so slick that they get sticky. You know what I mean? They're, they're like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're like so uh, smooth mm-hmm. that they become kind of sticky and they can kind of like, 
Yeah, I can't think of a good example. You know, it's like something you put your hand across and it's uh-huh. like smooth, but then it's so smooth, it's like whoosh, like glass, like, yeah, and then yeah, it, and then it like then it's like smooth, and then your hand sticks to it. You know, come out. <laughs> From your own sweat that comes off your hand. You yeah, I guess yeah, that's what it is. So, so kind of like you have to watch that. You you know you want them to be because real ivory, you know, it's smooth, but it's you know mm-hmm. it's kind of. I don't know. Got that look, that feel about it. yeah. It's a cuss, that's a... Uh, that yellowish color. Yeah, because you know. it, it, it ages, yeah. It, yeah. it yellows as it gets ages. It's some of the fake ivory I've been looking at, uh, it's guaranteed to uh, yellow as it ages, too. Oh, that's cool. So, I mean, if, which we all know why that uh, ivory is the, best, the big thing. George Patton, by God. Yep, yep. You know, his ivory exactly. handle, 1911, by God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey. you know not pearl. To, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you got to get sometime, and they're, they're still available. They're not as expensive as you would think. Is a uh, 1903 hammerless uh, that Patton carried one of those too. Oh shit! And I think that's the gun he fired at the airplane. Maybe oh, both. I don't know. Because he always had two guns on. Yeah. Uh, his biographer said, "If you see one gun on Patton, he had two. Yeah. If you see two, he had three. Well, he had three that he was known for. He had the 1911, oh. and he had the Colt single action, mm-hmm. and then he had the 1903. Have you ever seen one? They look like kind of like a miniature 1911, mm-hmm. but they don't have a hammer. It's all internal. Oh, okay. And uh, they, it came out before the 1911. Well, 1903 is what Didn't it came out. Didn't take off? Was no, it did. It was super popular. Oh, what? Yeah, John Dillinger carried one. Oh. It was like one of the first automatic pocket guns, basically. Oh, okay. Okay. And it was chambered in. It, it initially came out in 32 uh-huh. ACP, mm-hmm. and then it was chambered in 380 down the road. So it's not, you know, you can a, get a re- it in nine. A real anything, pocket but, gun, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I saw this other gun that Patton supposedly had. Well, that he had. He bought a uh, a 357, which uh, – who made the first one? Was it Smith & Wesson? Uh, the first 357 Magnum. I think Smith & Wesson. Nah, don't, don't, it was don't a 1935, and he bought it for $60. <laughs> 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 well, it's 1935. Though. Yeah. And uh, I, I looked it up. The equivalent now is uh, like 1400 bucks now wow. uh, in, in modern dollars. But uh, sixty bucks in nineteen thirty five, you yeah. know, the average person made ten bucks a week. Oh yeah, uh, that inflation thing is crazy. Oh man, and uh, he he called it his, he called it three fifty seven his killing gun. <laughs> his killing gun. <laughs> I wound him with that three eighty yeah. and finish him off with the with, with the with the three fifty seven. Yeah. Oh, dude. Here's something else. I mean, yeah, I'm thinking you could just I'm I'm I'm, rem- I'm reminiscing. You could go back there and just buy a Thompson, throw on the seat, and ride around. Oh man, stop. Yeah, Mr. until Thompson. Yeah, until you know the gangland shootings, you know, because 1934 of uh, weapons it. act. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Those are the good old days, you know. Well, you know, most cops we talked about. The most cops back then had to buy their own gun. Right. It was going to be a you know a 32 snub nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you think about. <clears throat> I mean, think about this, like. I mean, today there's some small towns. Yeah, I think about in the 30s, oh, how yeah. small some of oh, these towns were. Oh yeah, you know, oh. like, especially out in Oklahoma. Oh and, man, uh, Texas, yeah. and East, Indiana West Texas. was a bit was one of the places that they would hit a lot. Yeah, the, the Missouri guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've got these super small towns where, you know, there might be a hundred people living in the whole town. One so, or two cops, maybe. Yeah. Know. So like, you know, in the course of a year. You know, what's the most serious thing they might deal with? You know, maybe someone breaking into something or stealing yeah. something probably. Maybe, drunk. yeah. You know, so you don't need, you know, serious stuff. But then, you know, this. Here comes Bonnie and Clyde rolling into yeah, town. Three yeah. fast cars come rolling in. You got BARs and <laughs> shotguns and Thompsons. Oh, my God. I mean, oh my God. You know, it's Who's like, going to stop them? It might Who's as well be the National Guard. Yeah. You know? And that's what they, they uh, uh, I saw Bonnie and Clyde got their uh, BARs. They they hit a National Guard armor. Yeah. I'm like, how did they break into that bug? <sighs> Times have changed. Uh, yeah, they probably you know just had them all held the Thompsons, the BRs yeah, yeah. behind the uh, you know a, a, a chain link fence, but yeah. you know with a light with a, with a lock, right, yeah. you know, yeah. kept that hit with a hammer, the lock flew off. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That part, the armory, yeah, literally is probably like a, a you know a gym locker. Or <laughs> yeah, come on. Who's gonna go in there? Go. On. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's crazy and. It's interesting, though, that that was like one of the last times, just kind of like the Wild West, where you could do something like that and actually get away. But yeah. but nowadays, I mean, the thing, being able to outgun the police, that hasn't changed. You know, you could conceivably still outgun the police. You know, you could, especially if you had explosives, <sighs> yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, you know, serious stuff. You could outgun the police for sure. But the thing that you can't do is you can't, you can't get away. You because, can't get away. Yeah. Uh, what the, 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 the road these uh, highway cameras uh people with their cell phones yeah uh, you can't you can't get away now you and can't. also if you're outgunning the police you know that's you're probably doing some serious stuff and you're going to be a high priority which um um if you if, i don't know this is uh, if this is really exists or not those crew like in the movie heat yeah. with the nero mm-hmm. and uh, val kilmer if those people are really out there 
I cops, feel like they're not probably. Probably not because yeah. you can't find criminals that are that loyalty. There's no there's no loyalty among thieves. No, not necessarily. And also, I don't think that would have worked really. You know, because that uh, really kind of that movie was about. It was like, oh, we got it's like a modern day Dillinger sort yeah, of yeah, you know, exactly, thing. Yeah, but yeah. Mm-hmm. but even then, when that movie came out, I don't feel like that was that realistic. Oh, um, there were there were armed car robbers now. Yeah, they, they were similar because I watched a really interesting documentary about about one, and I think. Uh, the movie Town. Have you ever seen that? No. That's a great movie. It's, mm-hmm. it's Ben Affleck. I think he like produced it and stuff. Uh-huh. And they're like these bank robbers, and it's it's like a, they try to make it a very realistic kind of bank mm-hmm. robber. Yeah, you'd like it. You gotta check it okay. out. Okay. Um, but it's sort of loosely based on that. Uh, there's these guys from Boston that had this system for knocking out armored cars, and they had this like just foolproof system. They they had they would only they would come in heavy guns like you know they had full auto ARs all this kind of stuff right but people wouldn't res- resist because yeah, they yeah. Were, you know they were so powerful uh-huh. and uh, they would only unload the car for a specific amount of time they all had yeah. it on their watch mm-hmm. and they would be just you know bags of cash and mm-hmm. then as soon as the timer went off all right they leave didn't matter how much was left yeah yeah and they never got caught until like after they retired or something and someone ratted on them uh movie a true story that that's a true story the movie is about they actually go into banks not i believe cars. it because if you can find a crew of guys that can actually work together like yeah. that mm-hmm. and are, are disciplined well-trained professional right you got a problem yeah. if you're if you're if you're the armored car company if you're the cops you got a problem because these guys if you ever corner them look out yeah because uh they're gonna do what it takes to get out of there right and uh well i think police are better armed now thank yes, god definitely. they're better armed. ars in the trunk know, thank, thank god uh but um I think again, if they if uh, they run up against a well trained crew, coordinated, they got their shit, their stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah. But fortunately, uh, when I was in school, that level of that level of criminal, that's what you call a professional criminal. Right. That's what they do. I'm and a they're professional. Rare. Yeah, very rare. Very. Yeah. Most guys are just you know we're doing it we're doing it for now to get what we need. Right. Because mostly drugs. Exactly. Because so, yeah. the thing is like. The drugs are where you make the money. Yeah. You know, in reality, and also if you're gonna work that hard. It's like you might as well do something that's straight, you know, instead of yeah. If, I, the law, if, if I'm that know? good, I could be making real money, legit. Money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, those uh, again, uh, the the the, uh, the North Hollywood shootout from uh, '94. Uh, yeah, I love citing that because these guys they were uh, armored car robbers. Yeah. Uh, they pulled down three, four, five million a shot. Problem was, like Dillinger said, uh, they they get money was one thing. Having a plan after that, that was yeah. the problem. Because yeah. that's the problem Dillinger had and a lot of these bank robbers. They get the money, great. Great planning, coordinated. But then after they got the money, it's like, we'll just spend it until it runs out. And then they got to do it again. And then we got to do it again. No right. plans for afterwards. So that's what got them in trouble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think guys like that would probably get addicted to the rush of it or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you're not doing it just for the money. You're doing yeah. it for the <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is, I think, yeah. most of the time. And like the North Hollywood guys, they could have got, but they, they got high before they went in there and robbed that bank. Uh, the armored car was supposed to show up that day, and it didn't. So they decided to go ahead and take down the bank, and they got maybe 12K, which yeah. ain't crap to them. That's, that's, not, that's that, change. You know? Poor discipline and you criminals. Know? You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then uh, they were, if you got to get high to do it, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, that's my, that, that would be my number one rule. Yeah. Uh, some of the interviews I did. Wait, so you're saying never listen to Pink Floyd albums? <laughs> <laughs> we did some interviews with uh, convicts in uh, Kentucky, State, Kentucky State Prison, and all of them said the same thing. If We asked them, what would you do differently? If yeah. You had, and every, every, almost all of them said the same thing. I'd do it by myself. Yeah. I'd do it by myself because if you do it with somebody, that means somebody else knows you've done it. Yeah, and if they get caught up, and they will, somebody's gonna get caught up. That's true. And to save themselves, they're gonna give you up. I guarantee you. Yeah, guarantee true. you. To be like a cat burglar. Or something. That, that's right. No, you <laughs> the, know, the Nick like, Cat. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Cary Grant, <laughs> Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> in your black suit, you know, yeah. <laughs> creeping in the mansion late at night, yeah. <laughs> doing the safe, <laughs> pulling the jewels out, <laughs> putting your pocket. <laughs> Come on. Come on, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of uh what's that movie that last uh The Dark Knight, the last one? Um uh with uh what's her name? Uh she played Catwoman. Uh very hot. What's her name? Um Oh, Halle Berry? No, no, no. No, no, not very hot, you're right. She did, but, she played Catwoman, right? Yeah, she did. Very okay. hot. But uh a different one? The, the white one. Tall white one, not the short black one. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 uh and Hathaway. Oh, okay. Add Hathaway in, in uh, um, Christopher Nolan's Black Dark Knight, the last one. 
uh, she breaks into the, uh, she's got her cat suit on and uh, she's fighting the dude. Uh, of course, she can do karate in, yeah. in six inch heels, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right? And uh, he, um, he, uh, he pins her up. He, uh, he, she's got him up against the wall. He's got the gun on her and he says, Do those heels hurt? And she picked her leg up, pinned him to the wall with her high heels and goes, No. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> dude, <laughs> excellent, excellent. I, that's my kind of burglar yeah. right there. You know, hey. Oh that's yeah, funny. they never said Catwoman. By the way, for all yeah, those nerds yeah. out there, they never said Catwoman. But yeah. she wore the dark vision goggles. Whenever but, she flipped the lenses up, they happened to look like cat ears. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, you know what's funny is like, you know, Batman, Catwoman. It always just sounded like oh, it makes sense. Batman. Catwoman. But <laughs> bats and cats have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It couldn't be any more different. <laughs> well, now, what's with mask? Okay, well, okay, I know. From uh, from Futurama. Yeah, that's uh, true. The mask looks similar. Uh, the know, mask is like, why do superheroes wear a mask? To avoid lawsuits. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right. There's a lot of collateral damage. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't want no lawsuits. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me, do you watch Game of Thrones? No. I, you you got to start that from the beginning. Oh, yeah, you, you do. You, you can't be like getting to the middle of it. What's the dragons for? You know? Yeah. At some point, you ought to uh, tear into that one and go through it. Is it that good, huh? It's good. I heard. Uh, it's really good. The thing is, I like – like my, so my whole thing with this show is I've never been a huge fan of like the fantasy genre before yeah. you know mm-hmm. like Lord of the Rings it's I've seen them they're okay but it's not like my thing really you mm-hmm. know I'm not big into Harry Potter and that stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. not at all but uh, Game of Thrones though is such a good show it has such good characters in it. you know okay. it's just really good the battle scenes are amazing the storylines and everything okay it's just really good it's it's great and there's not too much crazy stuff uh-huh. you know what I mean like it feels very like you know, this old, could be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it feels yeah. kind of realistic. You know, uh-huh. there's some things here and there that are um, mm-hmm. it's kind of supernaturalish, but mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. There's something um, interesting about that time. You know, swords and yeah, right. And stuff, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was man against man. I think a lot of people long for that. Yeah, because uh, it was man against man back then. No red dot sights on your AR-15. You can no. hit the guy 500 meters. No, no, no. You had to get up close enough. To oh, him. yeah. And when you stabbed him, his blood splattered on you. Yeah, yeah and the swords are huge. Uh, some of those, oh yeah, gi- big giant things. Yeah, I mean you, you. I mean, people were like five five swinging these bras. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I guess those uh, knights and stuff back in the day, they they must have been super like you know, upper well, a lot of upper body strength. Well, athletes. life made you tough back then. I mean, uh, yeah. people back then were tougher than anybody alive today. And, yeah. uh, and you could die at the drop of the hat. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's if infection did kill you. I mean, yeah. uh, scratch your arm. Oh, two, a week later, you're dead. Right. Um, people were just a lot tougher. And uh, uh, I think war, it seems like there was a lot of combat war in the past, but I doubt it because um, because you really had to fight. There was none of this oh, yeah. you know, at a distance. You had to go out there in that field and kill him man yeah. to man. You know? um, I remember uh, reading in some of these uh, ancient battles, both sides were standing and looking at each other for, about, for like an hour. Really? Because you, we have to go over there yeah. and kill them, you know, hand to hand. Yeah. So they just kind of stare at each other until somebody just said, "Okay," until move forward. Yeah. So it uh, scary, terrifying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, people were, you know, urinating on themselves. Yeah. Defecate. I mean, it's hand to hand combat. Yeah. Now you got people who loved it. You know, lick that stuff up. So, um, you, you know, there were those guys that were just good at it and just survived. Yeah. Lost they licked it up. You know, oh yeah. Well, another yeah. war. <laughs> Yeah. That, I guess that's the one thing about it is, of course, a lucky arrow could always get you. Yeah. But uh, versus now, if you were really good with a sword, like if you truly were mm-hmm. like head and shoulders above like almost anyone you would come in contact with, mm-hmm. you know, I guess you'd be hard to kill. I mean. And we can't – I don't think we want to imagine how vicious they really were. Yeah. Battles back then really were. You got Will and an axe. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, and, and also um, what it would do to your mind. Too. Yes, I mean yes. we know what happens. You know, people come back from Iraq. You and know, shooting somebody with a gun three hundred meters away. Yeah, okay, he's gone. But like, cook, like you've seen you're, heads split yeah, open. You know, and, yeah, exactly. You and, know, uh, and like you're seeing people's brains. You know, you know, you know entrails falling out, <laughs> splattering all over you. You know, people the the, the, the wounded, the smell, the wounded are yeah. dying. Oh, dude. It, uh, that's like a medieval battle. Ancient battles never lasted more than an hour. Yeah. I because remember, you're going full throttle, yeah. and then maybe an hour later, you're done. And if you're not trained for it, which most of them weren't, yeah. most of them just, hey, you, come out of that field, peasant. Uh, here, have, yeah. Here's a yeah. sword. 
what? Here's a sword. Get yeah. out there and fight, you know? No armor problem. Yeah, yeah. You know, hey. Um, now, what uh, messed up the knights is that when the English came out with that longbow, uh, oh, yeah. that, that English long. But all of a sudden, this guy, this peasant from the field, could knock, take out a knight off that horse. Yeah. From uh, what is it? Uh, I think uh, anything under 100 yards, a longbow would go through you. And it could, and it, it could, and it hit you. It could go out to 400 yards. And up until 1860, it was uh, as effective as any rifle. Oh yeah, hard to see it coming too. You oh. know, the sun in your eyes. Oh, yeah. oh, oh God, Ugh, dude. So, yeah. uh, so. I'll tell you, that would be a, a good strategy. Is like if you could attack your enemy when. The sun was coming down where it was in their eyes. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. just lob those arrows in. They look up and you can't really see and they're all coming in. Uh, that's what the Roman, one reason the Romans were so effective is that they were trained. And they had that system, which I guess is historic. You yeah, see it in all yeah. the movies. They yeah. had the shields. Yeah, would... shield wall. And then uh, they would fight. And then the sergeant, the centurion, sorry, major, the centurion <laughs> yeah. would blow a whistle every uh for every two, three minutes. He'd blow a whistle and the guy would pull the other guy back and then take his place. So... A fresh guy would take his place. Yeah. So you're only fighting like every five, ten minutes. That way you always got a fresh guy up front. Fresh yeah. guy up front. These guys are wearing themselves out. Yeah. But you always got a fresh guy up front. The Romans were organized and disciplined. But everyone's terrified of them. Oh, yeah. And uh, I read this thing about the Zulus uh, uh, before I came up here. Um, they took on the British in 1876, 75. Yeah. Uh, the British got their butt kicked initially because they – underestimated them that's the quickest way to get your butt kicked yeah because they were more about speed right? yeah, speed yeah. and they're, they're you know they're just natives they're running around half naked and the biggest problem the british had is that they were afraid they were gonna get away they're yeah. gonna get away that's the problem uh the zulus were well trained disciplined and they had tactics yeah. they, they got <laughs> they got uh spears and yeah. and, and skin skin shields but yeah. they were well trained um and plus the british thought well we got uh martini henry uh rifles uh, oh, okay, so this is up into the weapons. The yeah, gun era. Okay, the yeah. British had those Martini Henry rifles. Yeah, you know, uh, it was what 45, 44, 44, 70? Uh, 45, 70. 45, yeah. 70. Uh, you know, they were one shot, but they were a lever action though. Yeah. So they, they weren't they weren't muzzle loaders. Right. So they thought we got the technology. The British had machine guns. They had artillery. They thought, what, what chance these guys got? They, they come out of the caves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tactics, tactics, tactics. The Zulus used better tactics. Wiped out. They attacked. They didn't attack the main British force. They attacked the camp. Wiped out eighteen hundred Brit Brits. Yeah. And then Rourke's Drift. For all you history guys out there, uh, one hundred and forty British guys held off uh, almost five thousand Zulus wow. uh, for two days. Uh, dude, they killed like three thousand of them. Jesus. Because they were in an entrenched position. They had barricades. They put loopholes in the buildings. Oh yeah. And they wore them out with, the, with those Martini Henrys. Wore them out. Yeah. So, hey. It's so, like that movie, The the Last Samurai. Yeah. You know, kind of a little bit like that. Uh, one of the people at the at the time of the battle, one of the reporters wrote, as the Zulus came on, it was like a Roman army coming forward yeah. against people with rifles. Oh, yeah. And I got to give it to the Zulus. Uh, the British were wearing them out at two, three, four hundred yards, but they just kept coming into it, which, yeah, that's brave, but. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess there's a. It, it's like there's a fine line between bravery <laughs> <you know? laughs> and ignorance, maybe. You know? That's right. It's like if if they're will, if they're if the bad guys are willing to take the casualties, they're gonna get to you because yeah. that's what really wore the British out the first time they fought them is that the Brits had weapon superior weapons, but they ran out of ammunition. Yeah, bullets run out. Yeah, and then it comes down to hand to hand. Oh shit! Fighting people that that's all they do hand to hand. Right. Yeah, you pile them up, but. They're not afraid that they use the knife and all that crap on you. Yeah, that's just amazing to me. Like the like the style of fighting, like the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, where they just you know just come at each other and, and have the discipline to like you know your buddy just got his half his head blown off and all right I'm just gonna keep going and shooting. That's crazy. Some I mean. of the reading I did from some of the diaries from the Civil War said the pressure, the peer pressure to stay with your people as they advanced across that field was incredible. You were born and raised with these people. Yeah, you can't be the one to run away. No way. Right. And he gets killed, and you're back home. Well, Hickok, why are you back here? Where's Joe? Uh, I, I don't know. I got lost. Yeah. <laughs> I, got lost. I got separated. I yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. So you can't. The peer pressure was terrible. Yeah. Uh, at uh, Maverick Hill in uh, Virginia, 1862, I believe. Um, the Confederates uh, talked about how they're marching up that hill toward the Yankees, and the Yanks are wearing them. I just killed them. Six, 52 caliber rifles, Springfield uh, rifles, yeah. are wearing them out. And. They said the guy who survived said, I could not run. I was with these guys. I was born and raised with them. I could not run. I was terrified, yeah. but I could not run. Yeah. I had to stay. 
until they get until they finally gave the call to retreat. Yeah. Oh, uh, and you're right. Seeing some guy, you know, your friend's blood splatter on there. Uh, yeah, those big mini balls. I think fifty. I think they were fifty eight caliber. Oh, so, oh, oh my god. Oh. I mean, it's almost Ooh. like a rifled too. Oh, oh yeah, so oh. they're accurate. Big chunk of lead. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, you seen uh, that movie? Uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey Jones. Free State of Jones. Yeah, That's uh, a good movie. The Free State of Jones. That first part when. Oh they, man, that battle is brutal. Oh, oh, no, you know, I, that even though it's short, it's it's a it's one of the more like brutal and realistic Civil War battle scenes that I've yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They're behind. Bar- they're so close. That's what's scary. Oh. Like they go over the hill, and it's like they're right there. It's like, oh, God. and they're fi- you see them aiming at. Oh. Yeah, it's, I- yeah. I, that I saw that one in the theater, and I remember, you know, and I've seen you know all the big Civil War movies and stuff. Gettysburg and all yeah. that. Yeah, Gettysburg yeah. is great. You know, it, the battles don't feel totally realistic. There's not yeah. much blood, and you know, and all that. But but just the story and everything yeah. is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, but the uh, yeah, they come over that hill and you see those guys like there's just I had a, kind of one of those moments where I was just like, ooh, that's close. You Two know, rows like, of guys, <laughs> one kneeling, one standing, and they're at oh. yeah, like you can see facial expressions. Oh my you know, god! Oh stuff. my god! That guy, the, uh, this buddy gets shot and the blood splashes on his face. He just wipes his face and keeps walking. Oh. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, back then PTSD, which they didn't call it, but then they called it soldier's disease back then. Okay. Uh, they didn't. Uh, they had no idea what to do for you. They just put you on the train and sent you out west. Just, just get on this train and yeah. stay on until it, it stops. You know. Hey. Yeah. Oh. At least back in those days, like probably a little easier to manage PTSD because it's like, you know, especially if you go out west, it's like, is it that different from? You know? <laughs> That's right. Like, yeah. Just anybody in front of you. Yeah. you. <laughs> it's like, man. I don't know how to adjust to this, you know, <laughs> environment where like everyone's trying to kill me when I just got back from this war environment. Yeah. The um, the um, what was it? The uh, uh, when I was in uh, school, this guy from the, this old western guy came and talked to us about the old west. Yeah, he said you see the movies from the fifties where the bad guys ride the town, everybody you know scurries away. He says BS. These people in these towns in the old west were from Civil War veterans. Yeah. They've been in Gettysburg, Shiloh, Atlanta. They and, weren't, Yeah, war with the Indians. They, too, they, yeah. They, yeah, they weren't going to run anywhere. In yeah. fact, if that guy acted the wrong way, he'd find himself hanging from a, hanging from a tree. So. Yeah. Well, no, no. They, it's just like what happened in Coffeeville with the mm-hmm. the Dalton gang. Of, uh, you know that story? Mean, uh, you're talking about uh, Northfield, Minnesota? No, this, this is in Coffeeville, um, Kansas maybe? I don't know. It's kind of like – it's not – too far out west, but it's like west yeah. and uh, I don't know, Coffeeville is what it's called. Uh-huh. Anyways, the Dalton gang, they, I think, used to ride with Jesse James and yeah. some of those guys, and they were uh-huh. like sort of detached from them. Uh-huh. And they somehow they knew that they were going to come and try to rob that bank, and they tried to, to do to rob two banks at the same, same time. Same time, yeah. Yeah. And uh, these guys were ready for them. And it, what's cool is, so these guys, it's so neat if you ever get a chance to go to that town, mm-hmm. and because they, they've got it, you know, all the stuff set up there, and, and they've got these like, uh, silhouettes painted on the ground where some of the people died and all this kind yeah. of stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's interesting. And um, so a bunch of uh, citizens client went up to the second story of this hardware store, which is still in operation today. The <laughs> building is still there, and it's still a hardware store. All right. I think they said it's like the oldest, like never gone, like it never went out of business. You know, um, hardware store, mm-hmm. uh, something like that. And they went up to the to the top, and they had a perfect vantage point of uh-huh. of the first bank. And they just lit him up, with, oh, yeah. you know, with Winchester rifles, tore him up. Oh my god! But this oh. one guy, they all got killed except for one guy, mm-hmm. and he got shot like thirty times and survived somehow. Whoa, dude! That's yeah. a, he's a tough. He wrote a book. He came like a writer. Wrote a book and stuff. Oh my god! Oh man! I think uh, he did. But uh, Northfield, Minnesota. That's the that was the James Gang last uh, last ride. Yeah, uh, they 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 picked the wrong day to ride in the town. Yeah, they picked the wrong. <laughs> it was the over. It was the first day of hunting season. Everybody was in oh, town with guns. That's not uh, good. Oh, my God. And then all of a sudden, hey, they robbed the bank. Hey, that's my money's in that bank. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, I can't place that one. I, I've seen – have you ever seen the movie called the, the Assassination of Jesse James? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think if they depicted that in that movie or not. I know there was like a train robbery they showed yeah. in there that was kind of – that was an interesting movie, kind of dark. but mm. it, was, it was an interesting time and uh, – but I think um, as civilization moved further west, they said, "Well, maybe everybody don't need to just open carry everywhere. You know, have a gun, but just not yeah. open carry." You know, right? which you know, I, you know, that was like the first gun control, I guess. You know, well, in town, you couldn't have a in town. Yeah, just in town. Yeah, once you could, 
strap up, dude. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. I guess, like, I mean, I would still be against it, but I guess, you know, it's not as bad as, like, as now. Because, you know, the town is small. Yeah. You, know, you had you one main street. You know, right. you know, everything was on the street. It is at, more like a, saying no guns in a specific building today, kind of. Yeah. At, well, the like, reason for that was that of course, people getting drunk all the time. Come out. To... Okay. All yeah. right, dude. Okay. Uh, like Tombstone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. There's no cars to put your gun in. That's <laughs> you know, <laughs> so say. if you go into town and you're going to drink, you're going to have a gun, you know. You got to lock in the car. <laughs> what about, to... <laughs> about, this... about the book board? You can't have like a, a foot locker on the book board. Yeah. <laughs> <Lock it up. laughs> all right. Saddlebag. All yeah. right. You know, that's something Dad and I have always talked about. I guess it was his idea. I don't know. We used to talk about how it'd be so cool if like there was you know because that's always a problem you know mm -hmm. if there's a place you want to go into but you can't bring your gun because maybe you're going to drink yeah or whatever you're not allowed to have it in there or something like that and you got to figure out what you're going to do with it you know um if businesses had i mean it's too expensive i guess but if business had like lockers yeah you know like in the front of the business or check your gun at the door you know, yeah something ready, like you know, that what's that 45 put right here and put a name tag on it put in the box yeah <laughs> <laughs> Empty it out by firing it in front of the chambers. <laughs> well, you know, I think uh, the big deterrent was if everybody was packing. Yeah. If you open up in that gun, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're done. Yeah. You know? The bartender had a coach gun behind that bar. He's like, "What's that? What?" Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I mean, the showgirls had, uh, you know, Derringers in there. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so everybody was packing, which I think that's the best deterrent. To web yeah. because everybody's got one right you know, don't open up dude you won't make it to that door yeah exactly so uh like uh kevin cosner and uh wider when he get took took over the town the oh, sheriff's yeah, job yeah. walked inside the bar with two boys boom yeah it all ends now I'm like <laughs> yeah hell you god yeah. Yeah, hell yeah that's what i'm talking about yeah, yeah. should be the same way now like. yeah <laughs> I, I still think I think my favorite wide Earp is the uh, one from Tombstone. Yeah. yeah that, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's, I saw movie. it again. Yeah. Can't see it enough. It's, I know. It's, yeah, it's just uh, oh, it's one of those special movies. Val Kilmer oh, stole man. the movie. I don't know what yeah. happened to him afterwards, but uh, yeah. he stole the movie. Uh, yeah, he did. Doc Holliday. Oh. And and you know and uh, what's his name? Andrew and Blank, the guy who played wide Earp. Uh, um. Um. Uh, Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was great, but yeah. Val Kilmer was really the standout. He stole, he stole the movie. He was, uh, Kurt Russell was a star, but Val Kilmer stole the yeah, movie. Yeah, sort of like the Joker in the, you know, the, yeah. the Dark Knight sort exactly. of. Exactly, yeah. I mean, oh, awesome. I mean, uh, Doc, I didn't want you to come with me now. I didn't want to speak for you. He walked up to him and says, What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, don't you insult me like that? <laughs> yeah. Don't you insult me like that. Yeah. Oh, it, it was great. Is like how everyone was a little afraid of that Johnny Ringo guy, <laughs> Doc Holliday. No, not at all. You can't even see straight. That's why I got two guns. One for each of you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like, oh my god. Oh, That's yeah. like the greatest comeback. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is no better comeback. That's the movie. That's what happened at Rooster Cogburn, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fill your hand, you son of a... <laughs> yeah. Right up there. Uh, and the shootout between Giant Ringo and uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, Doc Holliday. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, and he I'm was... And that was great. If you remember, like... He was like, "You look like you've seen a ghost," and, you know. And he, he was genuinely concerned that Doc Holliday was there. That's what was interesting. That's right. Yeah. That. Well, Johnny Ringo, you got like somebody just walked across your grave. Yeah. That's Did he right, put yeah. a cigarette down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did he put a cigarette down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's great. That's confidence. Yeah. I'm not even gonna stop smoking. I'm gonna kill you, and then I'm gonna finish my smoke. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, from what I've heard and and uh, read, Doc Holliday was the real deal. Like the real yeah. guy was. You know, because he moved out there and... He was a dentist from Georgia. Right, he was very, very educated. Yeah. But came out there and basically had kind of a death wish. Well, yeah, he yeah. had tuberculosis. He was slowly right. dying from tuber yeah. tuberculosis. was a big killer in the 19th century. Yeah. Uh, they had no cure for it, no idea. Uh, All the way up until, I think, the 30s. Right? Uh, so, it, it, it's... Uh, tapered off around there. It tapered off when the early 1900s it started. Okay. They started having an, an idea what caused it and an idea how to treat it. Uh, but up until then, it was white people out left and right. Yeah, he was a lunger, a lunger. Yeah, lunger. Yeah, yeah, and uh, all the the only treatment they had was just rest. Oh, I'm just gonna lay here and slowly cough <laughs> yeah. to death. <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, he knew he was done. He knew he was done. That's why he wasn't afraid of anything because I'm I'm dead anyway. Come right. on. I know I'm going out. Yeah. So, I, uh, but the great, uh, 
Yeah, it's 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 amazing how sometimes th- there's certain roles, you know, where it's just like, wow, that guy nailed it. Yeah. Well, like the Joker in the from the mm-hmm. Dark Knight. It's just it's not even uh, you can't even say that it's good. It's just Look, perfect. You know what I mean? The dress, the the outfits, and uh, yeah. the tombstone. Oh, I, I, I'm all half tipped to get one of them suits myself. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, Derringer to one, yeah. then a shoulder holster, one, a pocket yeah, gun. Yeah. And the little, like, Colonel Sanders. You know? <laughs> String tie. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a daisy if you do, which is an actual expression from really? the 19th century. Uh, they're not really sure how it was used. They're, 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 they assume that um, they used it the way that uh, that Val Kilmer did, but uh, that was an actual expression from the mid 19th oh. century. You know, they say, "Well, if you do this, uh, if you do this, I'm going to do that." And then, "Oh yeah, well, you're a daisy if you do." Yeah, that was an actual expression from the 19th century. So, uh, oh. uh, you can get your cowboy gun. Well, you got the Henry, but you need a, a handgun. Right, you yeah, need a I'm Colt tra- single action. I got to get that or... big, uh, that big John Wayne uh, lever. You know, like the lever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. spin cock it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been practicing, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do with it, Henry. Explains that concussion I got right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Henry a little too big and heavy. A little bit that. big. Henry's a little bit big for that. You yeah. need that uh, that uh, Winchester nine two for that. Right, exactly. But, you can uh, get those. I think Rossi, that company makes one. Well, University. John Wayne, the, the, and that all came from John Wayne's first role in Stagecoach in yeah. nineteen thirty eight. People don't understand how big John Wayne was. He yeah. was like six seven. Yeah, you know, uh, like uh, two sixty. Yeah. I think it maybe like six four or something. Yeah, but, I was just bigger. He was John was huge. The Duke was huge. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, huge, ha- <laughs> huge hands, and uh, the him and the stunt guy came up with the large ring lever. Yeah. But so, uh, and then that's the first time he did it. The spin cock was in stagecoach in nineteen thirty eight. Pilgrim, whoosh, God, yeah, way to go, Duke. <laughs> it's funny when you watch that when you watch that movie, you know, because you obviously you know. You know, John Wayne is this huge, you know, character at the time. Uh, but it's fun to like, like what I last time I saw that movie, what I tried to do was imagine, like, okay, I don't know who John Wayne is, okay, at all. You know, I'm just watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. He deserved yeah, the Oscar. And it, yeah, and then and then <laughs> when you first see him, you know, he has that lever gun and everything. It's just kind of like, okay, I see why he was a star. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? It's I just mean, it, like some people have a certain like air about them. You yeah, know what I mean? John Wayne was. He tried to do other movies. Like uh, now, he pulled off the war movies pretty good. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, he tried to do like uh, uh, he did one. When he was Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Conqueror, I think that's the name of it. It was John Wayne in Asian makeup. That's why I was like, and he a little, little mustache. That's why I was straight, but and he sounded the same. It was the same. He, did, he couldn't even get the accent. It, well, it's John Wayne on. doing an Asian accent. Come on, dude. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he was only he was a uh, I guess one trick pony. Yeah. Uh, but he did it good. Yeah, that's the you thing. Know, Doesn't uh, matter if you're good at it. You, you know, know, John Wayne by God. It's like Sam Jackson. He's always Sam Jackson. It's the but, same movie every but it's time. Good, you know? uh, like uh, I like the movie The Horse Soldiers. Uh, John Wayne. That's from nineteen fifty nine. Yeah, I know come I've on. Seen it. Him and uh, William Holden were in it. Okay. Uh, loved it. I was like, hell, almost made me go cab in the army. Yeah. But they traded in horses a while back, though. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, there's so many good ones. Big Jake was always one of my favorites. You ever see that one? That's the one with the hat turned up, and he's okay. That's the one where it sort of takes place around the turn of the century, and they have the cars. Okay. Oh. Yeah. It's okay. so like the plot is um, his. You know, he's like this really wealthy ranch owner or something uh-huh. like that. But he sort of like just, I don't know, went out to do John Wayne stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, his uh, grandson was like kidnapped or something. Uh-huh. He's like, you know, big gang or whatever, mm-hmm. outlaws. Mm-hmm. And his like ex-wife contacts him and, you know, he comes in to try to save the day or whatever. And then his sons help him out. And they're actually his real sons in real life that play. Oh, yeah. Uh, Patrick Wayne and the other one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they have all this like newfangled technology. <laughs> so, that's <sort> of the, <laughs> so that's sort of the deal, you know, is like, you know, John Wayne's this old guy. And then they got this newfangled, uh, you know, that telegraph. And all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like one of them has a, uh, a motorcycle, Ooh. and then one of them has a Harley Davidson. Yeah, yeah, and one of them has a uh, a, a semi-automatic, a semi-automatic handgun. It's uh. sort of like a broom handle, but it's like an earlier version of it or something uh-huh. like that. You know, and it. It is a scene where like he starts shooting it or whatever, uh-huh. and they're all like ducking for cover because it's like going wild with it. And then it's like, oh, he already fired his six shots. You know? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it still has like three or four more. <laughs> of course, yeah. uh, I saw uh, what was it. Um, um, 
Oh yeah, that movie Monsters versus Cowboys versus Alien. Uh, that's surprisingly a good movie. Yeah, you're right. Surprise. It seems like oh, this is gonna be corny. But <laughs> no, no. Oh, um, um, Harrison Ford was in it. I was yeah. like, dude, I thought he's not, he ain't gonna play some crap. Yeah. But uh, he said he said that uh, he made a, a, an allusion to that in his uh, in the first part of the movie. He says uh, he's talked to the uh, main character. He says, yeah, back during the Civil War. Uh, you just like one of them lieutenants. Every time something happened, he jump on the telegraph and ask for <laughs> and ask for orders. <laughs> That's funny. But uh, it was surprising. You're right. Surprisingly good. Yeah. Surprisingly good. That reminds me. Speaking of the total opposite of that, have you seen? I recently got into this show called Rick and Morty. You seen? Yeah, it? I've, I've never watched it, but I've seen okay. it. Yeah. Man, it's like you know how when the Simpsons first came out. It was like, it's, you know, destroying American values. And, you know, it was like a big, you yeah. know, it was a very shocking kind of show because uh-huh. it was like, it, didn't, it seems tame by today's standards, oh, yeah. but it was like, it was a rude family. <laughs> you, know, you know, and then South Park was like that revisited. Yeah. Like Rick and Morty is sort of that all over again. You know, they're oh, like really God. pushing the, the envelope. envelope. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's, it's pretty cool because it's more in a... you know, because South Park is kind of like just a very crude kind of show. You yeah. Know? And sometimes I like that stuff, but. But it gets old fast for me. And yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, how long has it been on? I mean, yeah. it's kind of the same, rehashed. It's already, yeah. It's like how many times can you see like a – okay, I'm not going to say. But. It's like Cartman. Uh, I'll tell this joke. Cartman. Okay. Uh, uh, what's the, what's the – Kenny the Jewish kid? I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kenny yeah. the yeah. Jewish kid. He says, uh, yeah, uh, what's the matter, Kenny? You couldn't uh, – you couldn't concentrate in school, so they sent you to concentration camp. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> That's the one joke I remember from yeah. that time. <laughs> you know what's funny is back, you know, I had a, did a video doing stand up, and uh-huh. I ha- had a joke about that and uh, didn't realize it was from South Park, and someone told me, so I had to oh, quit doing it. Oh, but, don't, 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 don't. Yeah. You still doing comedy? Yeah, yeah, I still do. Yeah, dude, yeah. I, I, I didn't see you doing. You put up nothing on about stand up. Yeah, I haven't put up any videos lately. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, this Before guy. I'll do some more. I saw this new guy. Uh, well, new. I guess he's new guy. Uh, Eric Griffin. Yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah, him, I mean, yeah. I saw a couple of his shows. The guy, <laughs> he started out. You could tell he was just starting out because some yeah. of his jokes were like, yeah. But he's gotten better. You see him gradually getting better. Yeah. And better. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. He told them, uh, he talked about airports, which I agree wholeheartedly with him. Airports, the worst thing about airports is the people. Yeah. <laughs> the people, you know, not yeah. the worst. <laughs> they should have a lot, two lives, experienced travelers and jerks. <laughs> <laughs> like, Mr. Go through the, uh, the the security line with $5 worth of change in your yeah. pocket. I mean, dude. Or yeah. Mr. Two Jacket wearing guy or five computer guy. Yeah. But, dude, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. man. Check that stuff. You know, hey. Yeah. So. yeah, exactly. I was going to tell you, so Rick and Morty. Uh, okay, so people listening right now, if, if they watch that show and they haven't seen episode five from season three, don't listen to this part. Okay. But I have to, I have to say Close this. Close years. Because uh-huh. a lot of people listening probably won't watch it, but but this is an example of the kind of stuff that they do with, that I love because it's like, it's just, it's just a great joke. So anyways, well, there's a scene in this episode where, so uh, Rick is this sci- crazy, like insanely genius scientist, right? Uh-huh. And he can travel to any dimension. Can, it's kind of like Doctor Who in a way, okay? But like a cartoon, like a weird doc- cartoon version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has this machine in his garage that he's built, where it like makes things larger, right? It just it's like a ray gun, <laughs> okay. and it makes things bigger, right? So now him and Morty are off on some cra- like crazy adventure or something, right? Uh-huh. And at home, he's got this in his garage, and his daughter goes and uses it to try to make her boobs bigger <laughs> <laughs> but it's she like screws up and then it ends up turning her into a giant <laughs> and so like his rick rick's um i know i think it's his granddaughter and then his daughter whatever it's confusing so her mother comes out and like tries to help her and he's like you know and they're trying to figure out this machine right, right. they're trying to figure out how it works you know and they keep hitting buttons on it. And it's just like doing more crazy stuff to her. Like uh, it turned her inside out. <laughs> Ooh, ah, <laughs> at one point. Yeah, it's weird. And uh, so then there's like a number on the machine that says customer service. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So it's like this. Like, imagine like this, you know, this machine, right? Here, it's got like a <laughs> okay. big ray. So there's like a customer service thing on there. And then, so she calls the customer service, uh-huh. and of course, it's like, then it cuts to this, you got this little window that appears on the screen of like these 
three aliens, uh, you know, like sitting in this room behind this desk of a bunch of like, looks like an old like phone operator. Thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, you know, how do it's like this thing turned my daughter into like a monster. How do I, you know, get it to turn her back to normal or whatever? He's like, okay, all right, you know, this, no problem. Okay, what you want to do? Okay, there's a panel down on the right side of the machine. Okay. You see that panel? It's like, okay, yes, I found it. Okay, uh, now there's a blue button, something like that. There's a button there. Push that button. She's like, okay, all right. She pushes the button, and then a door opens, and they all run out of the machine. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we're free. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, okay, three little men just ran out of the machine. What just happened? <laughs> And then you can, like, see, like, their office and they're, like, gone, you know? <laughs> okay. I was like, you got to be kidding me. They're inside the machine. <laughs> okay. All right. That's good. That's okay. a pretty good joke. Uh, but I'm still more of a family guy. Uh, yeah, family guy's like, great. And, uh, which they tried to do a spinoff, uh, Cleveland. Uh, yeah. But it sucked. So uh, I, I watched a few. I like the Cleveland show okay. It was a good. <laughs> they, they brought him back. They canceled the Cleveland show, brought him back. And then they made jokes on Family Guy about how nobody stopped watching because you left. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. No, it was, uh, it was uh, Quagmire thought he was going to get his uh, his own spinoff. Uh, that would be tough, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's good, he's good, but it's like. Small doses. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's the problem with. You know, spinoffs. It's like it could be a really likable character, but a whole show of them might be. Yeah, yeah, he's good in that setting. Yeah, you don't want to oversaturate. Um, which uh, we had uh, a guy in Iraq living with a fire. <laughs> he's firing his fifty cal at these dudes. <laughs> he's going giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> like in actual combat. Yeah, I mean that's how he dealt with the stress. Like <laughs> giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> well, I mean, hey. I, Okay. <laughs> hey, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I thought he dealt, dealt with it. So, all right, yeah, man. I imagine that, you know, in those kind of situations, there's like a, <sighs> there's a, like a certain amount of controlled insanity. <laughs> that's so. right. I mean, but, hey, if it helps you deal with it, it helps you cope, I don't care. Dude. Yeah. I'll tell you off air. Some of those. Okay. <laughs> some of, some of the, <laughs> we got to do that Big John after dark. I can tell you we all do, this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, we got to do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that next time. That's right. Big job after dark. Yeah. That's a good idea. We'll That's do like an extra like 20 minutes. That's right. <laughs> I, uh, what the, I've heard of that. Some guys do that show. Like uh, Bill Maher does a, um, a show after the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, you know what we could do? Actually, since we're not live, we could go ahead and do it. Let me uh, – hang on. Let me check and make sure all this is working still. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and I'll come back, sit down, and we'll wrap up this show. Okay. Cool. And I never even told them what happened. So, we're, we're, you know, we're not live, of course. Okay. I wonder if the people that are not watching realize that we're not live. <laughs> That's right. I thought they were there. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because someone hacked my computer and the laptop that I use. Uh, luckily, it's not something I use for everything. I just mm -hmm. use it for live streaming mm -hmm. on the internet, but – so we had to do this old school yep. and use my little recorder box thing. But okay, let me go check that real quick. Recorder box. Yeah, that's right. I never got his waters. Let me do that. Oh, cool. Better late than never. Thanks, dude. Oh wait, I'm not. I'm not in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on. Okay, from the top. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to wrap this show up, and we're going to do another, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, and it's going to be the After Dark episode, and it's going to... Oh, fine. No preparation. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have... See, I actually created another YouTube channel called you John Hickok. Okay. And this one was Hickok 45 and Son, and the other mm. one was John Hickok, because I wanted to Did do you say John Hickok? John Hickok. Okay, all right. I'm just sorry. I guess it's my ears going. <laughs> no, I did not say that. <laughs> I'm is, like, what? Your mind is in the gutter today. No, no. We're <laughs> Earlier, so I've got one of those little, it's called a Roby. It's a tripod thing, okay. and it's like a three-arm thing, and it looks like a bunch of balls and yes balls yeah, Derek yes. Accused, uh, yeah uh, Derek accused me of leaving something out that i, I saw it to. laying on the floor behind the sofa 
<laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Yeah, so then I had to give him a demonstration. <laughs> okay, that sounded bad. That's right, it shit. <laughs> oh, that's right, and I'm not yeah. gonna be the same. It's a camera, yeah. <laughs> for life. Right. You thought Iraq was tough. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, so uh, appreciate you guys for listening to the show. Um, if you want to uh, check out the After Dark part of the show, okay. it's going to be uploaded on the John Hickok channel. <laughs> John Hickok. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, get all those syllables in there. <laughs> yeah, it's my name. You know, uh, you know. So just you know, search for that. You should be able to find it. It's a channel. If you're not aware of it, it's you know, it's a channel that I where I'm doing like I'm trying to branch out and do some stuff that's not always guns. You know, like I mm. I did a video like about that guitar, and I did. Um, no, I've done a few different things, you know. I did, mm-hmm. did a one where I, I was cleaning a gun the other day, and the boar snake, you ever use boar snakes? Yeah. You know, it got stuck in the barrel, you know, so mm-hmm. I figured out a way to, like, I wrapped it around a weight that I had, like, mm-hmm. kind of like a plate sort of like mm-hmm. that, you know, off of one of those, and then stepped on it, you know, and was able to pull it out. So I like making videos like that, just, yeah. just you know, short little things. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to start that channel so I have more some flexibility. Like, I'll cuss over there and whatever. So oh, okay. Like, yeah, so Profanity. We, yeah. So we can say whatever we want, basically. Oh, yeah. So anyways, if you guys want to see that, go to the John Hickok channel, and you'll see the very first ever episode of <laughs> the podcast After Dark. I don't know what we'll call it yet, but it's something like that. That show after the show. Uh, show after show. Yeah, the yeah. after party. Hickok after party. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys for hanging out, and uh, we'll talk to you later.